Hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. I know the photo in front of you probably isn't clear enough to read. This is a letter I got from the superintendent of the Maine School Administrative District Number 72 on November 21st. Uh, dear Mr. Allen, I'm writing to clarify a few things so that as the year progresses, we can establish and maintain a positive working relationship with you and your children. The first issue involves the use of digital recording devices. After consulting the district lawyer, I learned that there are neither laws forbidding parents from taping encounters with school staff, nor legal rights for a parent to do so. That means that the matter is left to the discretion of the local schools. I am directing the staff to refrain from meeting with you if you insist upon recording the conversations. My reasoning is that the presence of a recording device can inhibit discussion and get in the way of problem solving. This is especially true if those meeting with you are affected by thoughts of becoming your next upload to YouTube. Recorded meetings can change behavior, make people more guarded in the way they uh, say, and can cause posturing which inhibits honest, open discussions. In other words, they're going to lie. Um, the next matter has to do with medications. We are not allowed to administer any form of medicine, aspirin included, without express written consent of a parent, nor are the students allowed to carry medicine on their person. It must be stored in the office and administrated, uh, administered rather from that location. By sending medicine with your children, you are knowingly violating policy and setting your children up to receive consequences for your actions. I don't view this as necessary or beneficial, as it will only prevent your children from ex accessing their education. We cannot ignore policy just because you are unwilling to adhere to them, and nor can we allow your children to violate these policies. I would ask that you support our efforts to maintain a safe environment for students by taking steps needed to assure proper storage and dispensing of medications. In conclusion, I look forward to working together to assure the success of your children that is more likely to happen when the school and parents work together to support the children. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. Well, we'll address the medication first. I did send both boys with a small little container which contained two Tylenol and two ibuprofen. Isaac, for his wrist, which you saw in the former video, the school would not care for and could not um, even wrap an ace bandage. You didn't know that the school called Department of Human Services and um, made like I wasn't attending to Isaac's needs because the doctor was behind schedule and I couldn't get an appointment that was appropriate for me. So I got contacted by DHS, a, a direct attack on me as far as I'm concerned. And I told the DHS rep representative basically to go to hell. He wanted to have a meeting with me. He wanted to do all these things for me that I don't need. Um, and I told him to go get a warrant. He said he would have to talk to his boss. Uh, and I said, well, tell your boss to get a warrant. Three days later, I was able to get an appointment, got Isaac in, and lo and behold, because of the care I've given Isaac at home and because of Isaac's strength and health, he doesn't even require a cast. Um, he's not even wearing an ace bandage now. He's pretty much 99% back to normal, and the doctor said, go ahead and play basketball. Um, so that's just a small indication of, you know, what I do to take care of my kids um, and the fact that the school can't do that. The big issue is the meetings. So since that letter, which clearly violates my rights and is a manipulation, and you see because of the medication they're willing to punish my children for my actions. Um, it, it's very clear in the letter. They, they will punish my children. That's a threat and a manipulation. Uh, anyway, I'd like you to hear the two conversations that I've had with Miss Kilpatrick sense this uh, in relation to Isaac's behavior, which quite honestly is not appropriate. Language and behavior, he's having a tough time settling into this school, um, but we can't meet to put in place a behavior plan. So I would ask you to send Miss Kilpatrick an email. I'll link you to this below, uh, letting her know that we're watching and we're not going to tolerate this. I'm going to ask you not to call the school because that will only hinder the children, and that's not the goal of any of this. The goal of this is to uh, maintain mine and my children's rights and to inspire other parents in the district to stand up for what's right and so that they know that they also have somebody on their side. I will ask you to call Mr. Robinson or come over here and leave him some feedback, but if you'd like to call, that's fine too. But I'm asking you do not call the school because th there's no profit in that for anybody. 
um, that's just going to hurt the kids. So anyway, I'm going to mute here. I will pause and point out a few things along the way. The first uh, audio is about 12 minutes. The second one is much shorter than that. So I hope you'll listen to this through because a lot of this stuff may be going on in your school district and you can pick up on some things that will help you defend your children and your rights as a parent. Um, so we're going to go to the audio now. This one was from the 9th of December. Hello? Uh, yes, Ms. Kilpatrick. Hi, is this Mr. Allen? It is, yes. I, I'm Hi. at home. Hi, my... I was calling to follow up with you. I know our counselor spoke with you earlier today and that um, uh, Isaac had a rough day today. Yes. Um, I was calling to let you know that just as we're following his behavior plan, um, he will be suspended for two days. So he will be suspended for tomorrow and Wednesday, but is welcome to return on Thursday. Well, is, yeah, okay, well, and I guess there's probably nothing that I can do about that because this is your little system. Um, but it doesn't make sense to me that a child would act out and get time off from school, ma'am. Uh, that's not what kept us in school and kept us focused when we were in school, as you remember. Um, and, and to again you know put that burden on the family family it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all it doesn't it doesn't make yep. sense um it's very clear that the school does not have his best interest at heart when the superintendent is um twisting the law to try to deceive me to tell me that i can't record or that you won't even meet with me to discuss his education and, and i don't know what the problem with truth is or, or being able to document the truth i mean when we have meetings if I'm not wrong, you do take meeting minutes, correct? Somebody's typing that into the the computer or, or to the, the the typewriter. Is that correct? Uh, the last couple meetings that I've had with you, no one has taken Well, but, but normally that's standard procedure. She said the last couple of meetings. Actually, we didn't have any formal meetings. The one formal meeting we had, they ended because I was documenting it. Other than that, it's just you know, I've gone to the school and spoke with her on issues, but they were not formal meetings, so there wouldn't have been any meeting minutes. But there was one meeting, and there was somebody there with a laptop starting to type in the meeting minutes, as is standard procedure at any school I've been with. And keep in mind, my children have been in school in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Texas, California, Kentucky, and now Maine. Um, and so at every other of those schools, now maybe Molly Ockett doesn't, but um, it, it, she doesn't even know what her own policy is here. Um, it would depend on the meeting, I would suppose. Okay, right. Um, yeah. But the purpose of my call today is to right. let you know about his two-day suspension. Sure. And he is welcome to come back on Thursday and will continue to use the behavior plan. Um, what I'll also do is send home a copy of the uh, data that we've collected so far. Um, last week, he, he seemed to have a very good... A quick pause to let everybody know that um, whatever data was collected has not been sent home. Or if it was sent home with Isaac, an improper way to send things, I have not received it. So I'm not sure you know, what, what it was that happened today. Um, but maybe you can have a conversation with him about that. Right. Um, and so how, if um, I can't document what we meet about, how will we put a behavior plan in place that makes sense for my son? Because obviously giving a child two days off for um, disruptive behavior um, and disrespectful language um, doesn't, doesn't make sense to anybody. Well, you, you were given a behavior plan. Right. Um, and then I was told to meet with you that I can't record the conversation, ma'am. So how can I? Because that's my right. It is my right well, to do that. In your school system, if I could finish, I'm trying to be very patient. Yep, but when I'm cut off and I'm lied to, I, I lose my patience quickly, okay, because you, even your superintendent lied to me. He said he con consulted his, uh, the attorney, um, which he may or may not have done, but if he did, then the attorney gave him bad information. Um, I have a right. Okay, he worded it to say that there is no law against me recording you. He was correct about that. But he says that because there isn't specifically a law that says that I can, that I don't have the right to. And he's absolutely wrong about that. Absolutely wrong. And so I can't meet with you because I'm going to withhold, with, retain my rights 
as a human, as a father, as a participant in the community, I'm going to retain those rights, irrelevant of what your system wrote down on paper. I'm an American. I can do that, and I'm going to. And so I can't meet with you, is what you're telling me. And so I can't put, I can't participate in a behavior plan that's appropriate for my son. You're going to go ahead and institute your own because I don't participate, and your own behavior plan gives a child two days off when they're disobedient. I don't think anybody's going to respect that decision, ma'am. I, d I don't think they will. D d d does it make sense to you if you pause and think about it? Um, I think if you have questions about the recording um, that were, had come from the superintendent, that's a conversation that you um, should have with him. I'm asking. Uh, Make note that consistently through all the video that I put up uh, so far, Ms. Kilpatrick and other staff as well constantly avoid direct questions. You cannot ask their personal opinion. Um, and, th and in this situation, you would think a principal of a school their opinion would be held, you know, at the highest level because they're there every day. They know the environment. They know how things flow and what's best for the kids. And, and they have an input. They need, they need to give me their input so that we can work together. But they refuse to do that. You, a direct question, because you're the main participant in the behavior plan that I can't participate in. The behavior plan was given to you, um, and if you have input for that, you're welcome to let us know what that is. I just did. That consideration. I just did. I'm and and I asked you a, a clear statement of how we participate in a behavior plan. I just gave you input, and you still haven't given me an answer. And, and again, you avoid direct questions. I'm very concerned right now, ma'am. And, and I, again, I'm going to hold Isaac accountable. Um, I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, obviously, he has had um, discipline uh, also aside at home a little more restricted because we can't have this. Okay, but if I can't interact with you in a truthful conversation and get direct answers and, and respect each other on that level that you expect from the children that you teach. Okay, if you asked one of the children a direct question and they said you'd be better off to ask my mom or dad, you'd suspend them or bring them to the office for being disobedient. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mr. Allen, I, I'm at this point in time. I'm not. Uh, I've got an appointment that I need to go to, and um, the purpose of my call. By the way, uh, Ms. Kilpatrick has used that line in four other instances. And again, just the note on the avoidance of the direct questioning. I think we all know the answer to that. If a child gave her that response, they would receive discipline. But it's okay for her to do it. Just to let you know about your child's. Uh, suspension. He is welcome to come back on Thursday and hopefully he can follow the uh, expectations that are provided for him and all the other students here at school. I do have another appointment that I need to get to um, and if you have questions about the recording devices that you choose to bring to meetings, I would suggest that you contact the superintendent about that. Oh, I plan to. I know that you have gotten a letter from him. Yes, I have. I, yeah, and I've got to uh, actually upload that. Um, my sentence. And um, the directive that I've gotten from him is to um, not participate in meetings. Right, I understand that. They're being recorded. So I'm going to hang up at this point in time and um, let the superintendent know that you may be um, in touch with him about some questions that you have. Yeah, okay. it'll be a little later down down the line um, when I contact him, um, and I'll bring company as well, um, because you're not going to violate my rights, and he's not going to either. It's on my list, uh, okay. but it, you know, in the meantime, I have to work and, and raise my kids and all these other things. Um, so I, I guess, I, and I know you have a meeting, but I, I'd like to know. You still haven't answered my question of how uh, we we put together a meaningful behavior plan for my son because the one that you have I'm sorry to say is not meaningful and I have given you my input and you s haven't given me an answer on how we change that or wh what else we could do y your question is how can we meet no my question is how do we put together a behavior plan for my son that works because giving him two days off as a discipline does not work for anybody the behavior plan that we have in place um, was used today 
um, and the consequence of sending him home on a suspension was uh, a consequence that was given after several other um, redirections were put in place. So if, if you look through the behavior plan, it spells out the steps that are expected of him. Right, no, I understand that. that. And I had a conversation with the school that, and that's Isaac. That's not carried out. It, uh, okay, and I had a conversation with the school and Isaac, and the school uh, led me to believe that if Isaac didn't straighten out his behavior, I would have to come get him. I didn't hear anything from the school um, for the remainder of the day, uh, so I have to assume that, that those things did work because his behavior didn't get worse or continue, or you would have called me to come get him. The, so it seems the, like uh, maybe this behavior plan spells out what happens if he's not meeting the, um, the expectations. He was sent out of class today. Right. I believe the counselor spoke with you about that because he was using, uh, he was right. redirected several times because he was disrupting the learning environment. Um, when he was working with the counselor um, in her office, he used very inappropriate language for the school setting and uh, was very disruptive in the, in the office when he was in here. Consequently, um, he is receiving an out-of-school suspension for that. He was given the opportunity to uh, re refocus his behavior, but was, un was unable to do that. Um, he did have the opportunity to meet with a counselor. Just a quick note, people. Um, we hear a lot of verbiage from Ms. Kilpatrick. Keep in mind that she's supposed to be in a hurry for a meeting, but she goes on and on repeating the same things that I've already heard from her and still no direct uh, answer to my question. And I'm sure she could uh, go into detail about her conversation that, we, that uh, she had with him um, at that time. Um, so those are some things that the behavior plan spells out, which we did go ahead and follow today. Um, the last, the last measure in that is if he's not able to meet the expectations of the of of the school um, after multiple um, opportunities to change his behavior, that it does result in a suspension, and that's what's happened today. Now you heard her say that they tried several times according to their behavior plan that was forced on me. I wasn't able to participate in that. You saw the video. They shut down the meeting. They came up with their own plan, and she clearly says right here that already her plan is failing to change Isaac's behavior. So um, anyway, let's get back to this. All right. No, I read, I read the plan, okay. and the point was more um, that, uh, you know, I, the, again, communicated with the school and they said they would call me to come get him if the behavior didn't change after I spoke to him, and, and th that didn't happen. So, I, and your statement was, and you know that um, his behavior didn't change. But so anyway, uh, okay, it's two-day suspension, um, and maybe you could email me with with an explanation of how we put together a behavior plan that works because I understand everything you said. Okay. And in the very end, ma'am. Discipline that gives time off from school is shown to fail repeatedly. And if you'd like, I can email you some links with statistics that would prove that. If if you really can't just think beyond what's painted on, on the page for you. And I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just, I feel like I'm butting heads. I, I, I make one simple statement. You do a bunch of sidestepping with a bunch of useless verbiage that I've already read and I fully understand. And I have made note to you that that's the case. And then I still haven't gotten an answer of how we can put together a behavior plan that works because your behavior plan will not work with my son. Nobody knows him better than I am, uh, than I do, rather. And, and that doesn't work with Isaac. He got two days off from school, and it really wouldn't matter what be, uh, discipline I implement at home because he got kicked out of school for two days. Isaac knows he got two days off from school because he got a little mouthy, and so he will have a tendency at times to continue on that behavior. That's a complete fail as far as discipline or education goes. And so maybe you could email me with some better options. And we, we can we can play ping pong with email until we both settle on some choices that work for everybody. I will send you some information. That would be outstanding. Okay, very good. You better so run we'll now. I know you're late for a meeting. Thank you. 
him on uh, Thursday. Thank you very much. Outstanding. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Sorry, Ms. Kilpatrick. Okay, folks. Um, that was four days ago. I have not received an email from Ms. Kilpatrick to um, so that we could at least... You see the compromise. I mean, I'm willing to do it by email so that we can put a plan in place. You know, my goal isn't to make a, a YouTube video about the school. I have other things that I could be making YouTube videos about. Um, but this is one way that we draw our attention. This is one way that we educate, and this is one way that we make change. So uh, I guess I'll have to continue on that path. This next audio is much shorter, so hopefully you're hanging in there with me. Uh, it's eight minutes and um, that was received just uh, an hour or so ago today on the 13th. Uh, my microphone was muted. I got your, this is Kevin Allen returning your call. My, my cell phone doesn't work at home. It'll ring through and then when I try to talk it usually uh, loses the signal so I'm calling you back through my PC. Oh, okay, I appreciate that. What can I do for you? Um, so I was calling to let you know that um, Isaac had a rough morning here at school. He was sent down to the office, um, teachers following the behavior plan that's set in place for him. He was swearing in class. Um, apparently when he came down, he was not appropriate, and um, the guidance counselor was uh, working with him to um, get him to settle down. But he was uh, disruptive um, and noncompliant with her. Um, well, if I could, um, he did come home and make me aware that uh, he was sent to the office, office uh, you know, and I asked him why. His explanation yep. was that he used the word damn, which is not appropriate, obviously. Um, you know, and in this situation, maybe if it was the first, I don't even know if that was, you know, the extent of the language that he used. But if, if it were, I tried to explain to him that, you know, if that was a slip, a uh, damn, uh, and nobody had heard it before, and they didn't hear it again in a long time, then they would have just given you a gentle redirection. You know, but we can't use that language. Um, but so I was happy that he came to me, but um, there's probably uh, some that he left out as well, I'm sure. So when he was down working, uh, checking in uh, here in the office, um, he was not able to come in appropriately. The guidance counselor stepped in to help out because I was out at a meeting. Um, he proceeded to, um, you know, be non-compliant, walking about um, in the hallways down here, um, refusing to come in to the office to, to work on his schoolwork. Um, when Miss Lansing was able to have him come into her office area to work, um, he was kicking chairs and throwing things against the wall to the point where the teacher next door came in to check on Miss Lansing because of the noise that his um, behavior was making. So um, as a result, he is being suspended from school for Monday. Okay, now listen, this is absolutely ridiculous, ma'am. We spoke last time. You ignored yep. everything that I asked of you. We have not been able to meet uh, to put a proper behavior plan in place. His behavior isn't getting better. And the reason for all this is because the school wants me to negate my right to record the meetings after I have had a verbal admission from administrators there that they use lies to control children. Now, this is very unfair to me. It's very unfair to my son. And this should be a big slap in your face that this is not going to work the way you handle it. I'm trying to be as patient as I can. But, I appreciate that. Well, well, if you appreciated it, ma'am, all of you there would not mind being recorded. All I look for is the truth, and um, I don't see what the problem is with that. And further than that, I'm horrified that this district would try to circumvent the law and my rights so that they could hide their lies. This isn't fair to anybody. And I am making notes... And at one point, all of this evidence will come out. And the problem with that is, is that many people won't look at it like a problem with the district. They'll start looking at individuals involved. And I'm trying to avoid that because that could be very inconvenient for everybody involved, except me, of course. Um, but so I would probably leave this conversation 
and have a talk with your superintendent and the rest of the staff and encourage them to always tell the truth not to negate my right to record and let's sit down and have a meeting so that we can control this behavior because the way you're handling it isn't working we've already documented that proof and you're unwilling to work within my rights to rectify the situation nobody is going to accept that when that comes out publicly if I have to approach the school board and go to the local media and the ACLU and anyone else uh, I, trust me I have a list of activists that would be very very upset but see once I present my case to them I want a few more dots so maybe we could stop that process by working together within the law and what's right and fix this problem so mr. Allen my directive from the superintendent I understand you're, you're double speaking again this is I, getting I us am. nowhere what I, I said am. to you ma'am what I said to you was when I left this conversation if I were you I would have another talk with your superintendent I know well, what your I, directive I from him you was to do that because no. Now make a note, she had asked me not to cut her off, but through all this audio you have heard her talk over me many, many times. So I just wanted to make a note of that as well. well I'm encouraging you to. I don't have to do anything. I, I, I haven't violated the law, ma'am. I haven't circumvented anybody's rights. I've been very upfront. Even when I didn't need to tell the school that I was recording them, out of respect, I did. Nobody respected that. They tried to twist the law and deceive me. And, and now you still want to repeat the same things over and over, which you already know I'm not going to comply with. So this is foolishness. It's very clear that the school district, and I'm, I'm looking at an entity, not you as an individual, there's a big flaw here, and you're unwilling to see past your little box that's been painted for you. And if you continue to do that, for certain individuals, you're going to violate their rights and eliminate any chance of them being educated properly. This is all being documented, ma'am, and at one point in time, you're not going to be able to escape this. When it comes into a legal arena, you're going to have to tell the truth, face the facts, or face uh, perjury and other charges. It's as simple as that. So, Mr. Allen, I, you know, I, I'm sorry that you don't agree with the process that we're using here with your son. And your I process do, violates his, the law and please, his educational I rights, so ma'am. my sentence? No, no, because I'm, 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 uh, quite honestly, you can't. Because you're telling me the same things over and over, and you're not getting the fact that you're violating the law, and you're violating my child's right to a proper education. It's as simple as so, that. So I can document it in RSAs if you'd like. Okay, and, and we, we need to have your son cooperate with the and school rules. Yes, and we need to meet all students. We, we need, I, I, I fully agree. On Monday, and if you have further questions about it, I would encourage you to please call Jay Robinson, the superintendent. I don't have any I'm questions. Hang, I'm not I'm calling Mr. Robinson. Now. I asked you to call him and, and ask I, him and to I'm revise his decision before a legal have, suit comes on the school. You're welcome to do that. And I'm going to hang up the phone now, um, but Isaac's welcome to come back to school on Tuesday and follow the expectations that are expected of all students. Okay, well, Have you may week want week. to let the Thank superintendent's office know Goodbye. they're going to be getting some calls Monday. Oh, and look at that. She hung up on me. Wonderful. Okay, folks, uh, I know it was pretty almost a half hour here, so I appreciate you hanging in there with me. And, uh, again, if there's anybody in this district that is in these same situations, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do. I will make a note. In reference to my middle son, Joseph, who um, normally has some uh, learning issues and behavior issues, or did at the Kennett Middle School, you saw some stuff about that, and it was really a, a tough time, and they would not change the way they handled Joseph. Since coming to this district, Joseph is flying. He's doing an outstanding job, not one incidence of behavior. Um, he's learning, he's organized, and I am very, very proud of his efforts. 
the point of that is is that each child is different and each child is going to react differently in each setting in these schools all of these schools need to be flexible enough to accommodate every child if we're going to call it a public school and if we're going to expect the majority of children to attend um, hopefully this will do more to help the community uh, there is no personal uh, thing involved here you know I, I don't really want to have to take time for this kind of stuff um, but I am not willing to give up my rights and I am not willing to be pushed around by anybody that is a servant of me and I'm talking about the public school they're a servant of me they're a servant of you we pay their bills we have more authority than they do and that is the way it is going to stay or I will not participate in the system and I hope that you all will have the strength and it is exhausting especially when you deal with people like Miss Kilpatrick that just want to repeat the same rhetoric but yet not give you any answers to direct question and is unwilling to even hear you out or to have any form of compromise this is not how progress uh, works this is not how change happens and uh, we need progress and we need change so anyway thank you for hanging in there I know it's a long video a lot of information and please um, either give Mr. Robinson a call or come on over here uh, and give him a little bit of feedback uh, one so that see they have the opinion um, that, that that this isn't going to leave Freiburg and they can do whatever they want to do um, I'm sure they've never come across somebody quite like me but you know after the first incident you probably should have expected it. So anyway, much love. Many thanks for your time.